Welcome back, Rankers. I had a great night last night. Thanks to P Award, Josh Rowe, among many others, I'm sure, who I don't know who they are. But I got to meet Tim Berners-Lee. Now, I don't know if you know who he is, but one of my heroes, the reason that I'm sitting here today in front of you, and have been sitting in front of a computer for the last 20 years, and why I've got a bad back, I must say. But uh, this is me and uh, Sir Tim last night, and I was like that all night, just walking around tagging behind him going, oh, it's Tim Berners-Lee. Uh, if you don't know who he is, well, if you're online right now, he's the reason. So go and look him up. A great, great man and really interesting to listen to. Passionate about an open internet and open standards for everything that we do. Um, I'll probably write another blog post about some of the things that were said at the Q&A panel session because there were some quite interesting things discussed there. But one of the things that Sir Tim is passionate about is the semantic web, what we call the semantic web. What does that actually mean? Well, it means about um, the web and the data that's on it and giving meaning to that data, if you like. If you want to read more about that, you can just go to W3Org, which uh, I think he's the chairman of. Uh, and read some of the stuff there about what structured data and semantic web and all those sorts of things are about. But it, I did actually talk to Sir Tim about Google and backlinks and authorship and, and those sorts of things. And he had some, some interesting things to say. But Google loves structured data, okay? And they make it really easy for you to implement. They love it for a couple of different reasons. One, you can get rich snippets in your search results. You've probably seen those sorts of things. If we go and do a search, say, for, uh, let's say, management courses. I'll scroll down a bit. You can see it's down here a bit. But here's the a Queensland uh, TAFE College. And you can see here, you've got a little bit of extra information here, a course code and a course name, and some information about those courses. That's a rich snippet, essentially. So are things like reviews, uh, whether something's a recipe. And the reason this is important is because it helps the machine, if you like, understand the meaning behind a piece of data. So, for instance, if your name is Mark White, how does Google understand that you're just not meant to mark something white as opposed to it being a person's name, or Mark Black or Mark Gray. Sorry, all those marks, I, uh, I just landed out there. But for a machine to understand what the context of that, those two words are, it needs to have extra data around it, all right? Now, if you go into your Google Webmaster Tools and you head down to Structured Data, if you, don't ha if you find you've got this video here, it means you don't have any structured data on your site. Watch the video, and it will then tell you to go and have a look at schema.org. And these are the sorts of data types that you, that you could have on your site. It can be events. It can be uh, whether some, the, the words that are on the page relate to a person, uh, an actual place, an address. So very important for your, your places, listings, those sorts of things, whether you're a restaurant, local business, whether the thing that the, the text is talking about is a product, um, all that sort of stuff. So Google not only loves it so it can put that information into rich snippets, it also loves it because it gives us more information about your web page and the site overall. If you've got lots and lots of pages or about different courses, well, Google has a fair idea that the site, therefore, must be about courses of some description. And it's just another extra signal to help Google deliver the most relevant content to its users. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just uh, shoot me a, a question at askjim at uh, stuartmedia.com.au. But it really is important. Look, we haven't got half of these set up on our own sites, like video object and those sorts of things. Certainly we've got play, certainly we've got people, certainly we've got a few other things in there. But you can see there whether you know, something's a book or a movie. And this is how you start to get all these listings in the, in the search engine results that you can then click on because you immediately see the thing that you're looking for because Google's able to extract it from the site in a meaningful way 
and display it as a rich snippet. If you're a review site, any of those sorts of things, you need to have this structured data implemented on your site. And it's relatively easy to do. It, if you don't code in HTML, then you probably want to give it to your web developer. But it still is a very easy thing to do. It's just about putting some, some descriptors, if you like, around certain pieces of code. So when the search engines come along, they can extract that and they are, okay, I understand what that piece of information is about now because it's been tagged appropriately. A simple, but we have found for rankings very powerful because if your competitors aren't doing it, it's that one signal that they're not doing, that you're doing, that gives Google that little bit of extra information that makes the site easier to come up in search because Google knows it's relevant to the search that the user just did. Short show today, but uh, seriously, get structured data set up because it is quite important. And this also moves into things like authorship. That's another step, uh, if you like, around structured data and how Google's now using that to attribute content to an individual. Uh, but if you're in anywhere in Australia, and I think there's still a couple of public lectures around for Sir Tim Berners-Lee. Uh, they're free public lectures. Get to one. Um, he had some fa fascinating things to say. One of the interesting things he said, oh, in case you don't know, this is the man who invented the World Wide Web. Okay, some people have said he invented the internet. No, he did not. He invented HTML and he invented HTTP. Now, HTML, in case you don't know, hypertext markup language, the things that web pages are built with. And HTTP TTP is hypertext transfer protocol, the way that the pages, are, uh, web pages, if you like, um, transmitted down to your browser or how they're linked together and those sorts of things. So one of the things he said was really interesting when he was developing uh, both of those uh, uh, protocols. He said that, uh, HTML, for instance, that actually came out of uh, SGML, which is Standard General, General Markup Language. That's what the publishing industry used to use to, you know, put together a newspaper, put together a magazine, bef you know, before we had the web, essentially. I don't, don't know if they still use it. And he based HTML on that. He said there were other languages that he could have based it upon that would have been uh, maybe more powerful or may have, may have done the job better, or may have been easier to use. But he used SGML for a reason. So he could bring in people who were used to using a similar language, SGML, and knew that a H2 meant heading. And the same things applied in HTML. He said he then used the directory structure of uh, web pages and the file structures and those sorts of things, he mirrored them from Unix environments. So people who worked in Unix environments could understand that and go, oh yeah, okay, I get that. And he used HTTP uh, based around similar uh, protocols like, uh, say, uh, NNTP, which is what we used to run the old Usenet on, or SMTP, which is how your mail gets to you. Because he said then engineers who worked in those fields could understand HTTP. And he said by doing this, he brought three distinct communities together who could basically jump on this information and expand it further. And I found that a fascinating way to go about something. This guy is essentially a scientist uh, and an engineer. And the way that uh, he thought about that and about how to expand that is something that I'll be taking into my own business when it, next time I launch a new product or uh, write a blog post even. It's what communities or what networks, other networks, could be interested in that piece of content that you're creating and how can you bring them in in a familiar way that they understand when you create that content. Hopefully that's helpful and we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye. How do you like the bag of fruit? <laughs>